Melatonin is not a helpful sleeping aid for younger, healthy adults and non-jet lag people. Alcohol is one of the most powerful suppressors of REM sleep. Older adults need less sleep is a myth. Hey guys, I'm Jeffrey, physical therapist, and welcome to my channel. Today's video, I will review this book by Matthew Walker called Why We Sleep. Just like how breathing fascinates me, I've always wanted to learn more about sleep and its importance. I will summarize the book like Sparknotes so you don't have to read it. There are four parts to the book and this video will be on part one where we will introduce sleep, talk about what is sleep, why we sleep, and go over the sleep cycle. I will be dropping some good insights throughout the video but remember it is not medical advice. So what determines when we want to be asleep and when we want to be awake? So there are two factors, circadian rhythm and sleep pressure buildup. Circadian rhythm is our body's 24-hour internal clock and it is controlled by the suprachiasmatic nucleus. The suprachiasmatic nucleus, try to say that 20 times fast, it's located in the anterior or front of the hypothalamus in our brain and it regulates most circadian rhythms in our body such as wakefulness and sleep, your time preference for eating and drinking, your metabolic rate, your core body temperature, and more. For example, your core body temperature typically starts rising at noon and starts declining a couple hours before bed. The drop in temperature helps initiate your sleep, but the rise and fall of your core body temperature will still happen regardless if you're awake or asleep. Like if you pull an all-nighter, you stay up all night to study for a test, your core body temperature is still dropping at the same time. Not everyone's circadian rhythm and timing is the same, so that's why some people are considered early birds and some people are considered night owls. Comment below which one you are. Night owls have a hard time sleeping early and they usually don't function well early in the morning because even though they are awake, their brain is still in a sleep-like state. The natural inclination of your body to sleep at a certain time is actually strongly influenced by genetics. Our society's work schedule definitely favors the morning larks or early birds. So if you don't like being a night owl, blame your parents. Although now, because of COVID, more people are working from home and they're working at more flexible times. And as a result, they're probably seeing more productivity. The second factor that determines sleep and wakefulness is sleep pressure, also known as process S. And circadian rhythm is known as process C. Let's look at both of these factors on the graph. A chemical called adenosine builds up in your brain every minute you're awake. Longer you are awake, more adenosine accumulates and the more sleepy you feel. Once you sleep, the adenosine accumulated for the day is removed from the brain and gets reset. The greater the distance between the curves equals greater urge to sleep. What happens if you don't sleep and pull an all-nighter? The adenosine continues to build up as the circadian curve continues to rise and fall. The distance between curves will vary as well. That's why you may feel a second wind of alertness during all-nighters when the distance becomes smaller. Melatonin and sleep. Let's talk about it. Melatonin, also known as the sleep hormone, is released by the pineal gland at night. Melatonin helps regulate the timing of when sleep occurs, but does not have much influence on generating sleep itself. In a the book, they say that melatonin provides the instructions to start the event of sleep, but does not participate in the sleep race itself. That's why melatonin is not a helpful sleeping aid for younger, healthy adults and non-jet lag people. Modifying lifestyle routines and practicing good sleep hygiene are better ways to help sleep. Also, over-the-counter melatonin is not commonly regulated by governing bodies around the world, and a lot of the over-the-counter brands have melatonin concentrations that are much less or much more than what is stated. Have you experienced jet lag before? Jet lag is what you experience when traveling across different time zones, causing you to temporarily have sleep problems. I'm from Taiwan, and I have traveled back and forth enough to know that jet lag sucks. Jet lag can really place strain and stress to our bodies. For every day in a different time zone, your suprachiasmatic nucleus can only readjust to about one hour. Oftentimes we don't have that many days to recover, so that's why melatonin can help in the case of jet lag. Fun fact, it's easier to adjust to a new time zone when traveling in the westward direction compared to traveling eastward. Now let's dive into the sleep cycle. There are two stages of sleep, non-REM and REM. The REM stands for rapid eye movement. Non-REM used to have four stages, but now only three because they combine stages three and four. They call the three stages N1, light sleep, N2, deeper sleep, and N3, deepest sleep. The body cycles through REM and non-REM about four to six times a night, averaging 90 minutes each sleep cycle. Non-REM sleep dominates more the first half of the night 
as REM sleep dominates more of the second half. In terms of processing information, non-REM sleep is when information is being reflected, storing and strengthening new facts and memories of the day, and REM sleep is when information is being integrated, forming new details and insights. Both non-REM and REM sleep are important for our brain's restoration and development. Alcohol is one of the most powerful suppressors of REM sleep. In other words, drinking alcohol can prevent us from getting the REM sleep that we need, which is not good. The electrical brain waves of REM sleep and wake are very similar. However, the main distinction physically is that during REM sleep, our bodies are almost paralyzed with no muscle tone. We spend a lot of time in REM sleep when we are in a womb and in early life, and then switching to deep non-REM sleep dominating more in late childhood and early adolescent life. Our circadian rhythm timing of when we are alert or tired also shifts throughout our life. That's why as teenagers, we slept late because we were not biologically wired to go to sleep at 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. Every animal in the world sleeps but not all the same amount. Like elephants only need four hours of sleep. Brown bats sleep 19 hours, must be nice. We humans are biologically programmed to have a dip in alertness in the mid afternoon hours. So taking naps is actually in our nature. But of course, with how modern work schedules are set up, we can't do that. Can you imagine telling your boss, hey, I can't work from one to two because I have to take a nap. Older adults need less sleep is a myth. They are less able to generate the amount of sleep they were getting in midlife but that does not mean it's not necessary. One thing to help is for older adults to get bright light exposure in the late afternoon hours to trick your circadian rhythm so you can stay up a little bit later to engage in better sleep. That could mean exercising outdoors in the late afternoon hours and wearing sunglasses if you exercise early in the morning. Older adults may benefit from melatonin, but of course, consult with your physician first. Poor sleep is one of the most underappreciated factors contributing to cognitive and medical ill health in the elderly like diabetes, depression, chronic pain, stroke, cardiovascular disease, and Alzheimer's. If you find this video helpful or informative, give it a thumbs up and share it. If you found it boring and I was putting you to sleep, be sure to watch it every night before you sleep so you can sleep better. Thanks for watching and stay tuned for the next parts.